Today's video is gonna be a little shorter than usual. We pretty much just gotta build a single model, but it's a really important model. We're gonna be modeling the sort of core business object for the application. And if you don't know what application I'm talking about, let me just quickly remind you. So if this is your first video that you're tuning into this course, this is a free course that I'm putting on YouTube. It's a course where I show you how to build this application that's in front of me right now. It's an MVVM app built with Jetpack Compose that accesses network data from an API that I built. So you can like search for different foods. Let's just click on the chicken. You can see I get results, recipes for chicken. If I click on soup, I get results for soup. And if I was to click on any one of these particular recipes, it takes me to a detail screen that shows me more details about that recipe. So this is the, the app that we're building. It uses MVVM, Jetpack Compose, Kotlin, uh, all kinds of new stuff, Retrofit 2, Coroutines all kinds of new stuff, all the newest, the latest and greatest Android stuff. And in this video, we're gonna be building kind of the core business model for this app. So what, what do I mean by a core business model? Well, for those of you who don't know what you know clean architecture is, or you've never heard this term sort of business model, it means that we're gonna build a model that models the core kind of data structure for the application. This is a recipe application. It displays you know a list of recipes. If you click on a recipe, it takes you to a detail screen where it shows you that recipe. So of course, the, the core business model for this application would be uh, something that models a recipe. Well, what does a recipe have? You know, it might have a title, a description, of course, a unique primary key, um, you know, an, a featured image for displaying, you know, what it looks like, the list of ingredients, and so on and so on. So we need to model this so we have something for that we can, you know, display a data structure that we can display the data for in our screens. So how do we go about modeling this? Well, first, let's take a look at the data that we're actually going to get from the network. So as I mentioned, the data for this application is going to be coming from the network. It's coming from an API that I built, foodtofork.ca. It has a bunch of recipes. I think it has like 3,000 or so recipes on here, and you can query them through its REST API. So if you go to foodtofork.ca, you have the endpoints at the top here. There's two kind of options for getting recipes. You can search for recipes, so like get a list, or you can find a recipe by a particular recipe ID. So this, this is essentially the document documentation that tells you how to use the API. So you can go ahead and look through this if you want, but I'm just going to jump right into it and do an example. So in order to get the data from this API, you're going to need the help of an application. This application is known as Postman. If you want to get Postman, which I suggest you do so that you can actually query the API, just go to uh, postman.com. So www.postman.com, or I believe there's actually a Chrome extension for it, which is what I'm using. So you can download that, and uh, when you when you download it, you'll be looking at exactly what I see here. Of course, you won't have these these tabs up here because it'll be your first time launching. You won't have these collections over here because it'll be your first time launching. But what you should see is like an empty sort of spot here. Uh, the data down here, this will be empty down here also, and you can just paste in a URL. So if we actually refer back to the documentation that I built for foodtofork.ca, it gives you some instructions of how to like search for recipes from the API. So one example here is, you know, searching recipes. This is a get request. So if I just copy this URL and I go back to Postman and I paste this URL up in top here. If we take a look at this, it of course references the website slash API slash recipe slash slash search. And then you have some query parameters. So there's pagination built into the server. So you can reference whatever page number you want. Uh, I suggest starting with page number one because you don't even know if there's more pages until you actually do query the API. And then you give it a query. So what do you want? What kind of recipes are you going to be looking for? This one says beef, carrot, potato and onion. So it'll look for recipes that have beef or carrot or potato or onion. So it's like it's an or logic. Whatever you put up here with spaces, it will search kind of uh, all of those things. So if I was just to put like chicken, then it's only going to search for recipes that contain that keyword chicken. So we're not done. We can't quite press send yet. Of course, make sure that you're on a get request. We need to attach some authorization headers to this. So if you go over to the headers section, oops, uh, not there. It should be up at the top. The headers section up here, you can see that I have a, a uh, an authorization header with a token. And if you go to the documentation, it outlines this in the docs also. It says there's one required header. That is the key authorization. And then the value is this token. 
So I added this um, this token authentication to the REST API because I think maybe in the future later, if, if too many people start using my API, if too many people start using my API, I might restrict it to members only on my website. And then in that case, I would have different tokens, obviously. But right now there's only one token. That token is gonna work for everybody. So you can just copy this and attach it to your headers and everything will work fine. Uh, the, the authorization stuff is pretty much just there as placeholders because later I might actually implement an authorization authorization system. So you just need to pretty much just copy this token and well, token space and then whatever the token is, copy that, go back to Postman. You want to type in authorization here. So you just write, you know, authorization and then just paste in that token. So token space and then whatever that token is. And then you're ready to use the API. So if you want to press send on that query, now down below here, you'll get results for uh, chicken. So these are, you'll get a big list of uh, recipes that contain chicken. And of course this is paginated. So let me see if I can scroll down here to give you guys, oh, that's the lowest I can scroll down. I wish I could uh, change this view to give you some more room, but it looks like that's the best I can do. Um, so yeah, here the, the data structure that's returned from the API is a, is a JSON object. You can see here, the JSON object has count, next, previous, because this is the pagination. So if I went to the next page, like if I went page equals two and I press send, now you can see that we have a next and a previous option. Then the previous option or the next option would be page number three and the previous option would be that first page. So there's no page parameter here. Now down below there's a list of ingredients and or a list of uh, recipes. And it's inside of this results sort of uh, JSON, uh, JSON array object. So this is a JSON array. Uh, each one of these is a JSON object. So like there's one JSON object and then down below it would be another JSON object. So what we want to do here essentially is, you know what, I'm going to go to the website because it it's, it will give you guys a better view. So here's a, an example of what the response would look like, but it's a little bigger so you can actually see it. So what we want to do in our application is we want to model this data. So this single JSON object right here, that is a recipe. So it has a primary key, a title, a publisher, a featured image, a rating, source URL, description, cooking instructions, uh, a list of ingredients, which is a another uh, a, a list object here. And then you have uh, date added and date updated. And these are just strings. So most of these are strings. Almost every single one of these is a string. This is an integer. That's a string, string, sh uh, that's an integer, string, string. Cooking instructions is a string, even though it's showing null. That's for every recipe that's going to be null for now. I just added that as a placeholder for maybe using later. And then the ingredients is a list. So that would be, uh, yeah, that's just a list where we would parse that as uh, probably as a string when we bring it into the app, but we're going to talk about that later. And then you have the date and date updated. So almost everything is strings. So we need to build a model to model this data in our Android application. And those of you who are familiar with Retrofit, I don't want you to get confused. This is not gonna be like the network response uh, model that we're getting from Retrofit. We're strictly just building the, the core domain model for displaying the data in our application. After this video, in the, in the video after this one, we're gonna build the network model for Retrofit for when we actually do the request and get that data from the network. So let's uh, let's start building our domain model. So the first thing that we're gonna do is I wanna go into build.gradle and I need to add a new plugin and this plugin is gonna help us parcelize our domain model so that it can be saved to an instance state or passed as a bundle argument. So Kotlin Android extensions. That way when, you know, in the event of a process death, we can save that domain model to the instance state and then restore it. If that means nothing to you and you don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry, we're gonna, I'll be, Talking about that later in the course, just kind of get this in here for now and we'll be using it later. Now, some of you might be thinking, hey Mitch, um, Kotlin Android extensions is actually deprecated as of Kotlin version uh, 1.4.20. So if you go into my build.gradle project file, you'll notice that I'm using Kotlin uh, 1.4.20. Uh, I'll show you actually what I mean really quickly. So just kind of put a pin in that and I'm gonna come back and talk about that uh, in a second. So go into the main package directory, create a new package named domain, create a new package inside of domain named model. And I know this is really kind of just a sloppy way to do clean architecture, but I'm, you know, this is a beginner course and I don't want to uh, overwhelm you guys. So I'm sort of doing a little bit of clean architecture stuff. I'm sort of not um, just kind of trying to kind of introduce you to it a little bit. 
So now create a new Kotlin file inside of that model package and call this recipe. This is gonna be our core kind of business model. So do uh, data class recipe and just open this up and we're not gonna have any uh, arguments in, well, let me just add a, a dummy argument for now actually because I think we need one in order to show you the thing that I'm about to try and show you. So just do value ID is integer. So watch what happens here when I do parcelize on this. I should get a deprecated warning. Oh, um, looks like I think I probably have to run the project to get the deprecated warning. So you can just take my word for it. The Kotlin X Android parcel parcelize is deprecated as of Kotlin version uh, 1.4.2. Uh, you know, let me just build the project and just see if it will actually give me the warning. So the project doesn't build and you get a warning and you get an error. So the first warning here is Colin Android extensions Gradle plugin is deprecated. So that's the extension here that we added. And then it gives me this weird kind of error that I have no idea how to solve. And this is really the reason why I, I'm not going to use the new version. Um, but here, I'll just, I'll show you what I mean. So Kotlin Android extensions is deprecated. It wants you to use Kotlin Parcelize instead. So if you're using Kotlin version 1.4.20 or higher, it wants you to use Kotlin Parcelize. So if I do sync now and uh, get that new plugin, I can now go here and it says that uh, this is deprecated. So change it so I can, you know, get rid of this import, get the new import. I want to get the Kotlin X Parcelize import. So now it's not deprecated and now it's telling me I need to add the parcelable extension. Okay, fine. So now what happens if I build this project? So you still get that error and the project will not build. So this error, I don't know how to solve it. I'm guessing it's some kind of a bug with the new Kotlin version and this Kotlin Parcelize plugin. I'm really not sure. Uh, basically, I'm not gonna waste any time trying to solve it. I'm just gonna go back to the way that I know works. So what I'm gonna do is do Kotlin Android extensions, and I'm gonna go into my Kotlin version. I'm gonna change my Kotlin version to 1.4.10. I'm gonna sync it, and I'm gonna move on with my life because I don't wanna sit here and try to debug something when this thing already works. So I'm going to uh, delete these imports. We need to get the old import, which is Kotlin X Android parcel, get the parcel implementation. Boom, there we go. Now watch, I can build the project and we're all good. Okay, so we're ready. We, we got our parsable extension. I can close build.gradle, close the project file, and now we can work on our domain model. I think I said earlier this video was going to be short and it doesn't really seem, appear to be uh, turning out to be very short. But anyway, let's carry on. So what do we want in our recipe model? Well, again, if we refer back to our data structure from the API, we, we want it to look like this. We wanna have a primary key, which is an integer, title, which is a string, publisher, which is a string, blah, 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 all of these fields. So let me, just, uh, let me just save you some time and just write them all out. So right now I'm gonna be basically making all of these fields nullable. Technically in a domain model, you probably don't want to make them nullable, but what this is gonna do is it's gonna save us having to do a bunch of error handling. And this is, uh, this is a beginner course, so I'm just sort of doing it, like I said, the, the sort of clean architecture-ish way, but I'm also kind of doing it the lazy way. So let's do uh, value publisher, that'll be a string, also equals to null. And again, if you're wondering where I'm getting these fields from, just look at the documentation. I'm just basically calling these exactly what it says in the response that you get from the server, and I'm declaring their types, the type that is returned. So this would be an integer, have a default equal to zero, value, uh, source, URL, the source URL will be, this is actually something that we don't end up using, I don't think. That's like the link to the, the original recipe that the API has. Uh, description is pretty obvious. That's gonna be the description of the recipe, like the short little uh, you know, snippet of describing what it is. Uh, cooking instructions, that will be a string. Also, some of these are, keep in mind, some of these I added afterwards, so I, the, the data itself was from a was from a previous website that is, that no, no longer exists, and some of these fields didn't actually exist in the in that API, and I just kind of added them, thinking that maybe in the future, if I ever add to this API, I might give you guys the the ability to like add recipes, uh, you know, update recipes, like essentially register as a user, and then be able to like add recipes and things like that. So I wanted to add some extra fields, some fields that I thought were like relevant to uh, a recipe app. 
So things like, you know, description, cooking instructions, these are, these are fields that I added. They did not exist in the original API. So most of these are just going to be empty or they're going to be null, but they're just kind of there as placeholders because in the future, if we ever add to the API, then we'll use those. So that's it. That is our, our core kind of domain model. This is the, the data structure that we'll be using to model the data in, in our, in our app. Now, just to finish up, I just want to make sure that we can run the app or build the app just to make sure that we don't have any warnings, make sure that you guys use the correct plugin, you have the correct Kotlin version, all that stuff, and uh, make sure that you don't run into any problems. So there you can see launch succeeded, our project builds, and we're all good. So now in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to model the network data for retrofit. So that means uh, if you guys are familiar with retrofit, retrofit 2, it's for doing uh, network operations, getting the data from the network. So we need to build a model class for modeling the response that's from the network. So I'll see you guys in that next video.